Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do a full face of Charlotte Tilbury. I wanted to give the Beautiful Skin Foundation another try just to make sure we give it a fair shake. Um, and then I have some other products that are pretty much staples in my routine and I wanted to share with you. If you're interested in seeing what we come up with, just keep watching. Okay, so the only products that I don't have that are Charlotte Tilbury are gonna be my brows. And then although I will be using somewhat of a primer, I still wanna go in with my regular primer. Um, so we'll just do that. I'm going in with the Touche Clot Primer by Yves Saint Laurent or YSL. I haven't used it in a while, but last year and 2020, it was one of my favorite primers. It feels silicone-y and silky on your skin, and I still don't understand how it does such a great job of controlling shine and controlling the oils. So yeah, I love this primer. Okay, so when I did my review on the Beautiful Skin Foundation, you guys know that it really didn't work for me. It was like a grease ball of a mess on my face. Like the pores were showing through, um, nothing I did really worked. And so I just happened to be scrolling through some of my old videos and I have a summer makeup routine that I did early on. And I was like, hey, I forgot about that technique. Let me try it once again. And what I'm talking about is um, in between every single layer that you put on your skin, you want to go in with a very light layer of loose powder. And so that's what we're going to try today. I just want to make it work. I mean, I think that in general, from the pictures I've seen, reviews I've seen that did like the foundation it does look beautiful some even had oily skin like I do and I will say that some people that love it have oilier skin than I do based on what they've shared with us I tend to have combination oily skin so I'm gonna have most of my oil production here in the t-zone and then of course here in the pore area so I want to try this so I'm gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury magic loose powder it's one of um, the most finely milled powders that I have. It really is very nice. Now in this technique that I used to use for summertime, I would take a damp beauty blender or beauty sponge and I would go in with the lightest, with the lightest of layers of powder. And I actually use that all over the face. I don't only go into the T-zone, I do it everywhere. Especially because this is such a dewy foundation. I want to make sure that, sorry, I was out of focus. I want to make sure that I do a very, very light layer of powder all over. Okay, while I give the powder just a couple minutes to set, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury color corrector. I never used a color corrector. I didn't think I had too many dark circles under my eyes. Um, the last year of my life has really beaten me up and I do feel like I have a little bit of darkness there that I'd like to correct. I like to use this corrector and this is in the shade two medium because it also um, helps correct the darkness so that I don't have to use as much concealer. And so that's what I like to do. I normally just dip in my finger and warm up the product on my finger. And then um, I just go into the under eye. It also almost like this little bit of a dip here, you know, we lose um, a little bit of volume in our face as we get older. I feel like it even, makes that look more even. So I really have been enjoying this corrector. Do you see the difference? See, this one looks a lot darker under the eye. So it instantly freshens up and brightens the eyes and I really like that. There we go, fresh under eyes. Okay, today I'm really feeling like an all matte, very neutral, maybe even a little bit smoky look. So I'm gonna be using the Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette. Um, this one is just such a staple. You can take this as you go travel or for every day. I mean, you can smoke it up. You can go very deep or, you know, you can stay pretty light. So we'll see what we do with it. I'm taking my refer number one brush and I'm going to go into this second shade here. Now, even though, so it doesn't say that they're mattes. It says the super nudes. And I will say that it's more of a satin type of formula, which can be very flattering on your eyes if you have eyes like me. So I'm um, over 40 and um, my eyes, you know, they're a little hooded and I have a little bit of folds or uh, I hate to say crepiness because it sounds nasty and negative, but that the, the skin is getting thin up there. And so 
Um, look at how nice and pigmented that is. And so um, this satin formula that Charlotte Tilbury has in her eyeshadows really help soften that. I mean, even blur a little bit. Instead of just being flat matte where that could come off as looking a little dry. It looks like one is darker than the other and it's not. It's just because of the it's a little overcast today where I live but next I'm going to take my BK Beauty 207 this is my little pencil brush and I'm going to go into the shade next to that and just deepen up the outer corner here I have found that that's honestly like the most flattering way to do my eyeshadow for my eye shape kind of just stick to what I know That is looking really smoky, really pretty. So we'll stop there. Now I'm going to go into this one here, the darkest shade, or one of the lighter shades, it's a taupey shade, and just go into the lid with this, just to give the inner eye a little bit of brightness, to open up the eye a little bit. Okay, that looks open enough, but not stark white, so I really like that. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to take the black shade in the little palette here with an eyeliner brush, and I will just eyeline towards the end of the eye, maybe smoke it out a little bit. This is a really good technique. Like I've noticed like as I get a little older, my eyes get a little more hooded, and so this is a good technique for... Um, creating somewhat of a wing but um, it makes it easier than having to work with a liquid eyeliner okay so that looks good we are gonna stop there for now all right now I'm gonna go into a very iconic product which is the Hollywood flawless filter I've had this for a couple years you guys um, the line is right about there so I do try to use it uh, mostly for highlighter I don't normally go all over my face with it um, I like to just do the high points of the face, you know, where I would normally highlight, maybe down here, the chin, and I normally take like a duo fiber brush just to kind of work that in, but I mean already you can see like the glow that it gives is so nice, and it, I mean they call it the Hollywood Flawless Filter, and I'm going to tell you that's literally what it looks like on your skin everything looks glowy and perfected do you see the the glow there it's really really nice okay so my issues are normally oil so I'm gonna take a little bit more of this loose setting powder in the top here and I'm gonna take my damp sponge and I'm going to add another thin layer of powder and this is the technique that I was telling you guys about it's like you're setting like a barrier for the oils to have to work through. So therefore, it makes your makeup last longer. And if you notice, I haven't lost some of that glow from the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Um, this is a really beautiful powder. It's finely milled and um, it doesn't look flat matte, which I don't like that, you know, even though I have oily skin, like I want a little bit of luminosity because I think that that is also flattering on mature skin. So um, we're just going to do a little bit everywhere. Okay, now we're going to go in with the foundation. This is a beautiful skin foundation. This is in the shade 6 Neutral. In other foundations, just want to note this, I am 7 Medium. So this was just a shade lighter, but it works perfectly with my skin. So I'm going to put a couple pumps. I don't know why I did that. I won't need all of it. But I'll do just very light layers and what I'm gonna do just to go in very lightly is I'm gonna go in with my finger and just lightly dot a little bit of product I'm gonna take my Rose and Ben complexion brush and I'm just going to really take my time and work it in if you notice I'm actually going all the way up to my under eye here I normally leave that space um, without foundation for the concealer but I recently I don't know if you guys watch this makeup channel Risa does makeup she has a lot of tips for you know more mature skin hooded eyes especially and um, 
she um, shared this video last week where there's other tips for aging or maturing skin that look a little bit more flattering in the under eye. And I think she got that tip from Painted by Spencer, but basically she said if you don't struggle with like dark circles under your eyes, something you can do is use an under eye corrector if you need just a tiny little bit of help and take the foundation all the way up under the eyes. If you still need a little bit of brightening, like just in the inner corner there of the eye, you can do a little dot of concealer, but um, before I started watching YouTube, I never really wore concealer. It was one of those things like, you know, a typical YouTuber would do like the triangle situation with their concealer, and so I thought, that's how you do your makeup. Well, let me start doing that. But in general, I never wore concealer before that so I've been trying it and I kind of like it we'll go on the neck just a little bit and I'm really taking my time to really work the foundation in um, so that we don't leave it sitting on top of the skin sometimes some foundations they just they need to be helped you know Okay, the foundation looks good. So now I'm taking just my damp beauty blender, um, not with any powder right now, but just pressing in the foundation, making sure it really does sink into the skin nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna say with this technique, the foundation is already looking better than last time, especially in this area. This area was really a concern area for me the last time. Um, as you can see, the under eyes look pretty good. I am going to brighten it just a tiny little bit in the middle and in the inside, but the only area that looks a little weird is right here. There's a little bit of dryness. I don't know if you can pick that up, which is weird because I normally don't have dryness anywhere. I think I over exfoliate. So my face usually doesn't have any dry patches or anything. Thank goodness. Okay, so I don't have a Charlotte Tilbury concealer. I used to, and I decluttered it. It wasn't my favorite, so I'm gonna use just a little bit of my Pat McGrath concealer. Now, another tip that Risa Does Makeup had in her video is you take the concealer and you just put a little bit on the back of your hand, which is kind of crazy, like we don't normally do that. And I think we can tend to overuse concealer by just going directly under the eye. So I'm just gonna take another Rose and Ben um, brush. This is the C31. It's also a complexion brush, but it's like a concealer brush. I'm gonna take the tiniest amounts. As you can see, I just barely dabbed the corner there. And I'm going to go into the inner corner just slightly, just to really open up the, un the eye, give it brightness. So if you see, I'm just going in slightly, very small amount, just to really brighten up the under eye, open it up slightly. I'm gonna take my finger for the most natural application and press it in. See how the under eyes look? I used very minimal product, but I still got that really brightened look. Everything looks good, everything looks awake. Now, I'm very picky about the powders that I'll use in my under eye. There's only a couple that I will, and one of those is, of course, the Charlotte Tilbury um, Airbrush Powder. Um, this is in the limited edition New Year packaging. And I'll just very lightly go under there. Before I powder down the complexion again, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some of like her very iconic products here. So we have our contour wand. This is in the shade medium deep. And then I do have peach gasm and spotlight. I think I'm gonna use spotlight, the highlighter. I'm not gonna use peach gasm. It's honestly not my favorite. I've wanted to buy the uh, pink gasm and I just haven't had the opportunity. When I happen to look, it's always sold out, so whatever. So I just put it in these areas here, just the high points here. Tip of the nose here, just working it in. If we need a little bit more glow, I'll go in with a powder highlighter after this see how pretty like the shine so good all right now we're gonna go in with our contour wand I will say very very careful very light application goes a long way you just very slowly just 
press on that just a little bit goes a long way I'm going in with one of my favorite brushes this is the Sephora 56 this is the foundation brush get my earring out of the way the product is quite fluid like it's almost a little watery I would say and so I like to especially in the contour area I like to just let it sit there for a little bit before I start blending um, I just feel like I have a little more control of the product that way and then what I do is I just tap I don't swipe it looks a little intimidating at first but it will blend out very nicely so I go in with my brush first automatically gives me the contour that I'm looking for and then just to really blend it perfectly and make it go and sink into the skin I'll go in with my damp brush but yeah you don't have to be afraid of it it looks scary at first but it blends out really really beautiful I have like my cheekbones and like I get like the balls here the little cheeks here uh, my face is a little different so I like to kind of like carve that out and I find that that's the most flattering way to do any contouring of any kind if I do so just wanted to share that tip damp beauty blender just to make sure it's really melded in there and that looks gorgeous you see that I really like how that came out all right well we're looking a little glowy which is a little scary for me so I'm gonna go back in with my damp sponge and go back into the loose powder and we're going to powder one more time especially around the nose I'll, car I'll carve out a little bit here do the under eye area or the highlight area look at how flawless that powder makes your skin look all right, maybe I'm changing my mind, we'll see. I'm gonna do a little bit of a eight hour wear test so that we really know what we're talking about by the end of the day, okay? Okay, to set the contour in, I'm gonna go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Powder Bronzer. Um, the shade that I have is in 310, which during the winter or as I'm starting to get my color back, it could be a bit too warm, but if we go lightly, it still looks really pretty. I mean, honestly, I feel like it's the same formula as her Magic Powder because it looks very blurring, very nice on the skin, so. For a powder, I'm going to go in with one of her Cheek to Chic blushes. This is in the shade Ecstasy. I own one more and I can't find it, so this is my favorite one though. So I normally just swirl and then tap in the middle um, before I apply. And again, like Charlotte, she does powder so well. I just tap, 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 tap. Okay, I am loving how the flawless filter, you know, the first one we put on and the spotlight is poking through with such a nice natural glow so we're not going to add additional highlight now i'm going to set the entire face as a finishing powder i will also be using the hollywood airbrush powder airbrush flawless powder this is a very loose brush um, it's not very dense i don't want it to pack on the product i just want a light dusting um, we have used quite a bit of powder so nothing too intense is really needed and again the base is looking good there's still a little bit of glow and everything looks very very nice this area that i was a little concerned about now looks better so happy about that i'm gonna grab a small brush and just do a little bit of color on my lower lash line and i think i'll just do one color i'll go in with this one here this is my bk203 just to give it a little bit of color down here to make it look put together. That looks perfect. Okay, so the face is done, everything's done. We're gonna go into mascara, but before we do that, I wanna spray my face down with the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. You guys know if you've been watching my channel, this is like my favorite, favorite go-to setting spray. 
It works so well. When I wear this, my makeup does not move. Okay, so this mascara is new to me. Um, I've never tried it. I've had it there for a while. I think I got it in one of her mystery boxes, but Charlotte Holcroft has really been saying over and over how it's her favorite mascara. Kind of feel guilty opening it because I have so many other mascaras open, but I mean, that's what I do on my channel. I try makeup. So um, this is the Legendary Lashes Volume 2 mascara. It's supposed to be really lengthening and volumizing. I definitely shade black vinyl i say that because she just released a new shade recently like a auburn or brown mascara um but i'm excited to try because my holy grail mascara is the pat mcgrath dark star so let's see what Ooh, the brush looks very similar to pat mcgrath that's what it looks like I do like these kind of brushes because they do tend to be uh, very volumizing and um, let's see I like to go at the base and then just kind of wiggle as I'm wiggling I'm kind of rotating the brush a little bit and it is looking good huh okay this is timely and i'm glad i'm trying it out because you know um the pat mcgrath mascara had been sold out forever on sephora's website so wow this is really nice Whew, look at that let me finish off camera and i'll be right back okay so here's the final look oh my gosh okay let's talk about this mascara Whew! i cannot believe what i'm seeing you guys do you guys see this Oh my goodness. I did not know that it was that good, you guys. I did not know. It honestly mimics the Pat McGrath mascara. And I just feel silly for waiting this long to use it. Um, I'm going to be using it a little bit more and let you guys know. I will say that the formula is a little wet. So I did get it like on like my lid a little bit close to the lash line. I just left it. Nobody can tell. It almost looks like eyeliner. But I know that like within a week or two, once it dries down a little bit, it's going to be perfect perfect so i'm so so excited i didn't layer it with any other mascara which i normally do layer my pat mcgrath with like um like a lash strengthening mascara so i'll try that as well but today i just wanted to get my thoughts on this mascara so so far love it love it love it and then on my lips what i have is like some of my favorite shades which the pillow talk medium is my favorite lip liner i really do love this lip liner formula it's one of my best of beauty currently um, and I did talk about this in a recent video. And then the lipstick that I have it paired with is another beautiful shade. It's Angel Alessandra. It's um, Hot Lips 2 formula. That's what it looks like there. Let me swatch it so that you guys can see. It's like a peachy nude color, but with this lip liner, it just works beautifully. So that's what the liner and the lipstick look like there. Look at how pretty that is. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Everything looks great right now. I'm going to wait about eight hours and I'll be back at the end of the video to tell you how the skin did. I hope that we have better luck because this look right now, you guys, is so beautiful. I mean, look at it. It's so, so pretty. So if we can make this work, I'm excited to do that. I'll be back in one second. Hey guys, okay, it's the end of the day and uh, it's been a day. So I'm back because I wanted to show you how the foundation held up. Um, it actually doesn't look that bad. Let me get my mirror. Okay, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, I'm extremely shiny here and in my nose, which is very normal. That's always what's going to happen. Um, but the pores look a little pronounced because of the oil there too. Um, but in general, mm, it looks like it did kind of sink into the pores here but in general it doesn't look horrible it doesn't look like in my first video oh my god that was just a greasy oily mess um so it doesn't look bad so i think that i want to and i didn't blot all day i was just around the house you know kind of caring for my husband working cleaning a little bit nothing crazy um but i didn't blot because i wanted to be able to come back and show you guys so i'm gonna blot really quick and then um touch up again with this powder and then see how that goes using my 
using my Tatcha blotting sheets. I'm sorry if I look blown out. The sun's like, it's that golden hour, you know? Okay, so for not blotting all day, to just have one is pretty good, actually. So I will say that. Um, let me take... This is still sort of damp from the morning. Let me just powder. Okay, that touched up very nicely. All right, that touched up great. Okay, these are my final thoughts. I did powder pretty well on my first video where I did a review of the foundation, but I really do believe that the magic is in doing these very light layers of powder after every step. So what I mean by that is like, We'll do our skincare SPF, a very light layer of powder. Then we do our primer, a very light layer of powder like you saw me. I did foundation, light layer of powder, and then all my other products, and then I layered it with powder. You would think that that would look crazy and super cakey and very thick, but it really doesn't. And the key is very, very light. And I also believe that having a, a damp sponge makes a difference. Um, so that's what I will say. Here's my skin up close. It does not look bad, you guys. It does not look bad. It does not look cakey. Um, I will say that, is it going to be my favorite foundation? No, it's not. It's really not. What I will tell you, oh my gosh, this mascara. I don't even know. I think they have a push-up mascara too, but like this mascara, it rivals my Pat McGrath. And it's the first time I've worn it, opened it brand new on camera. But my lashes still look pretty darn good trying to show you guys I mean they do not look bad at all I can't wait for it to dry down just like a little bit like a week or two it's gonna be perfect um, so that's exciting like I found a new product from Charlotte Tilbury that I absolutely love I'm also loving this technique where we didn't do a ton of concealer I think that that helped it to look pretty natural all day long but yeah I actually love the eye look I love everything about how this look came together so there's my full face of charlotte tilbury i'm blown out a little bit the sun's coming down so there's my full face of charlotte tilbury i'm so happy that i got to try this again on camera it's not as bad as i thought but you know we're allowed to change our minds sometimes different techniques work i still don't like that i have to work so hard to make it work but at least i'm glad i didn't return it because i think for like a night out to give you a very nice flawless juicy glow for like dinner or something is good it's not gonna last all day long perfectly intact I don't think not for my skin type but um, I'm glad that I gave it another shot so have you tried this foundation have you tried this mascara what are your thoughts let me know what your favorite Charlotte Tilbury products are down below so I can go try some more and I will see you guys later bye